Welcome back everyone, One Dragon here. Today we're taking a first look at the Kingdom Norselands mounts. Today I'll be discussing their abilities and showcasing my initial tests over about 3 or 4 playthroughs. Ultimately, I aim to show what each mount can be used for, so you can make a judgement as to which to use and when. As always, with these early release videos, there's potential for changes if there are patches, and I could get things wrong due to a low sample size. Check the description or comments for changes. I normally post any corrections there. Firstly, the starting mount is a shaggy horse. Not much to say here except it runs faster in open grassland and has average stamina. It's equivalent to the starter horse in the other settings or biomes. On the first island, I believe the mount is a combination of a day and night horse. This horse costs 1 gem and 4 coins. As reflected by the symbols around the summoning stones and in the mythology, this mount changes depending on the time of day. Due to its changing colour, it includes several beautiful reskins of the base horse. It is significantly faster and has quite good stamina. As far as I'm aware, this mount lacks an ability, but it is necessary to solve the puzzle on the first island. The second island has two mounts. The first we'll be discussing is the reindeer. The reindeer costs one gem and three coins. It can be found by this shrine with a small waterfall. The reindeer functions similar if not identically to the stag from the other settings. It gains additional speed whilst in forest areas and is slower in open spaces. The reindeer is an amazing mount as it contributes greatly to any economy through its unique ability of charming moose, which you can lure to your archers. It was a staple of speedruns as you could gain a huge sum of money upon entering a new island. Previously, with the stag, you had to wait for a specific head turn animation of the deer for the player to charm it. However, the charming is much faster now and therefore more frequent. Another change is that for some reason the archers in Norselands no longer fire at the lured moose at night. They used to fire at any approaching deer. One amazing pro speedrunner tip for using this mount is considering the benefit cost ratio of waiting around at night versus paying off the greed to collect moose. For example, the value of each moose is 3 coins, and if there's only a handful of greed, just paying off the greed for that night and cycling the moose spawn is really good. Additionally, as added in Norse lands, if there's a camp, since the citizens now have spears, you can hire them to defeat the greed, dropping the coins you bribe them with. The final thing to keep in mind is that moose, like deer, only spawn in dark forests, so the mount loses profitability if there is not a lot of dark forest area for moose to spawn in. The next mount is Freya's Chariot, which can also be found on Island 2. This mount can be purchased for 3 gems and 7 coins from a shrine with cat engravings. This is probably the fastest mount in Norselands, as its ability is a massive burst of speed. When it has a flickering glow, and has a slight ringing sound, it signifies its ability is charged. Another added bonus is the ability to charm cats, and is therefore required for the cat achievement. To get this achievement, you'll first need to get cats to spawn, and to do this you'll need to enclose some trees, or a vagrant camp, or a merchant camp. Next, you'll need the chariot to charm the cats and then bring them to a farm. Moving on to the third island, which is probably one of the best mounts in Norse lands, Sleipnir. Sleipnir has a cool eight-legged running animation and it can be purchased from a giant tree, which I'm guessing is Yggdrasil. It costs three gems and 12 gold to purchase. Sleipnir is one of, if not the best, offensive mount in the game and is also quite fast both while sprinting and while walking. Its ability is a charge that leaves a trail of fire and can be used in two ways. Initially, I thought of just using it while facing away from the greed. 
However, the most powerful use is charging head first into the green. When using its fiery charge into the green, it knocks back regular greenlings and breeders whilst also setting them alight. The main issues with using the charge against regular greenlings is the fact that they can still land attacks if there's too many and measuring the exact distance and timing to avoid attacks is difficult. Personally, I found that using it into greed and then quickly turning around meant that I lost less gold, if any at all. Essentially, if you decide to charge head first, be prepared to lose coins and maybe the dog. The next really important use is stopping the hermit crab's charge and also exposing them. In case you didn't know, they seem immune to projectiles until they are exposed, and using slate near is one of the few ways to do this. The final note is to be careful with the use of the fire as it causes your units to stop moving, so keep that in mind. Moving on to the fourth island is a kelpie or a water horse. It costs 3 gems and 10 coins. This mount is quite fascinating in the sense that it has two sets of abilities, water and ice. In spring, summer and autumn, it stays in its water form and changes form and abilities in winter. During the warmer seasons, the water ability is mainly used for pushing away greed. It can also put out fire, I don't know why you would do that, but it can. In terms of speed, it is quite slow with good stamina, but the most important part is that it can eat anywhere or on any surface. This brings us to the winter version. The Kelpie is quite a good mount during winter as its ability changes and the ability to eat anywhere includes frozen ground. The Kelpie changes into a light blue color and its water ability is now frozen creating a wall. This ability can be used several times in a row and you can maintain up to three walls at any one time. The wave wall isn't melted by fire and functions slightly differently from a wall as the crabs do not crash into it, instead seemingly running against it. Additionally, this frozen wave ability has one very interesting use for protecting units from the boar charge. I tried using it after luring the boar and like the hermit crab, the boar just kept running against it without damaging the wall. The main issue was that the archers were not very accurate at firing around the wall, but after repositioning it to accommodate for the arch, it seemed to work out. On the fifth island is a golden boar or a gulen borshti. It costs 3 gems and 12 gold. I believe this is by far the slowest mount in Norselands, but the most profitable. The boar's ability is digging into the ground. This replenishes its stamina and has the chance to drop 3 coins. Even better, if used next to farmland, it also helps with the growth of crops. This is marked by a glowing effect. This essentially allows for really high amounts of income at an extremely fast rate. Overall, it's a decent mount if you need the income urgently, like right before winter or during winter. The sixth and final island has a blue wolf, which is probably Fenrir. Fenrir costs 3 gems and 10 coins. This mount combines two mounts from the Challenge Islands, the Armored Horse, which is also in the other settings, or Plague Island, and the wolf from Dire Island. 
It's a fairly fast mount with good stamina and runs faster on grassland. However, it can only recharge its stamina at night and in a clearing so it can howl at the moon. As for its ability, it is a leap that deals damage, albeit inconsistently. Although it can be used against greed, if it's like the direwolf, then it deals some damage where it starts the leap, and roughly where its snout or fangs land at the end of the leap. This is followed by two smaller hops that also deal damage. After slowing down some footage, it is quite inconsistent against Greedlings. Also, I would definitely avoid using it against a big wave unless they're clumped up against a wall. Normally, I use the lunge mainly for hunting moose. And you have to be careful as you can also damage greed portals with it as well. The secondary effect is applying a defensive buff that grants the highlighted units invulnerability for a time. You can tell when the ability is charged as it has a shine and a distinct metallic sound effect. This invulnerable buff synergizes extremely well with Hell's Skull and impacts ghosts. So far, I've been using this ability to fight through waves as I go to bomb the greed cliffside portals. These are the mounts of Kingdom Norselands and my initial thoughts and some tips on how to use them. I'll likely learn more about them as I play and I am currently experimenting with a few of them for my speedrun. Let me know what your favorite mounts are. Anyways, thanks for watching. Consider subscribing if you haven't. More videos to come. See you next time.